Uh, we're coming ever closer to August. I know that sounds weird, uh, but there's a reason why I say it, because in August, of course, there's something that happens in Scotland, north of the border. Uh, it's called the Edinburgh Festival, uh, and lots of people go there. Uh, some of them don't do very much that's interesting at all, but some people do some very interesting things. And Alex Salmon uh, is here with me uh, from that very part of the world. We're going to talk about the Edinburgh Festival a little bit later on, because uh, we've got a bit of an announcement to make. But before that, uh, what we should do, of course, is uh, look back at your glittering career in the banking sector uh, and seek your guidance on what the hell Coots thought they were doing because uh, this must be a relatively recent development. Well, what an achievement. Yeah. Coots Bank, the Royal Bank, been around since 1692, if uh -huh. I remember right, uh, and they've managed to make a victim mm. out of Nigel Farage. <laughs> I mean, this is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, you know, Nigel Farage... A nation weeps. Well, Nigel Farage <laughs> has made a victim out of the rest of the country in Brexit. Yeah. Well, that's what and, you say. And now, well, I say that. Uh, yes, he did. But now he's the victim, mm. thanks to Coots. What are they thinking of? I know. I mean, you know, if banks stop banking every customer they felt, they felt, was an unpleasant chancer. Mm. They'd have dead they left. Well, exactly right. Well, uh, people have been asking the question, you know, who else has got an account at Coots that they might wish to look into? Yeah, well, King Charles. You know, I, um, I, I think King Charles, given that Coots is the Royal Bank, and has been for, mm. uh, for more than uh, 300 years, I, I, I think that King Charles should personally apologise to Nigel Farage yeah. uh, for this effrontery of uh, cancelling his banking facilities. Yes. Uh, and I, I do think it should be made by Royal, Royal Warren because I don't think Nigel would settle for anything less than a full frontal apology yes. from King Charles. Well, listen, he's already had one from John Sopel, um, <coughs> well, which yeah. came as a bit of a surprise yeah, to John not, Sopel. No, no, I mean, with due respect to John, he doesn't have the full impact that, that King Charles has. <laughs> no, I mean, look, Coots has been trading on that, the Royal Bank thing for, uh, for you know, not... They were actually part of the Royal... I was, once upon a time, I was the economist of the Royal Bank. Yes. <clears throat> but Coots is not just... Well, that was before the, the, the Nat West takeover, though, wasn't it? Well, it was the Royal Bank took over Nat West. Right. But, of course, more recently, when <clears throat> the Royal Bank name fell into something of question because of uh, Fred the Shred yes. and all that sort of stuff, they decided to... Gordon you know, Brown's mate. Uh, they tried to rename, instead of the Royal Bank group, it became the Nat West group. I kind of resented that, incidentally. Mm. I mean, you know, banks go through bad times. Yes. So you, can't, you can't just keep changing the name because, you you know, you lose a few billion quid mm. here and there. Right. Uh, but nonetheless, Coots within the Royal Bank <coughs> was the Royal Bank. It, yeah. It's the bank where the, the Queen Mother, where Her Majesty the late Queen... I was told, and I don't know whether you can know this to be true, that the, 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 the Queen Mother had a massive overdraft with uh, with Coots due yeah, to yeah, her but, but, uh, gambling but, facility. Well, she, she had... Uh, I don't know if that's true, but she had certainly unbond, uh, you know, several million cases of gin, so that, that was more than enough <laughs> collateral yes. for the for any uh, default. Uh, I, but I bet the Queen Mother, I thought she was a wonderful lady. Uh, when it came to the Commons uh, uh, tributes to her, I, I wished her a sunny day with the going good. Yes, I'm sure she would have appreciated that. Um, but, but yeah, fascinating that, that they should cause themselves such self-harm. I was talking to Isabel Oakeshott this morning about this, and, and clearly they didn't think that the reaction to what they did would be what it was. They thought that everyone would go, good on you, yeah. you've rid us of that pesty, pesky, ghastly Who figure. Who rid us yes. of this exactly. turbulent Farage? Exactly. <laughs> but in fact, it went completely the other way. No, you should really leave that sort of thing to the electorate. Yes. And when you're a banker, you really should not. I mean, I was in Coots recently at a, a, for a meeting and a, at a wonderful time and uh, and I saw it was bedecked in, in rainbow colours. Right. Now, don't get me wrong, I think it's perfectly reasonable for people to show their support for Pride Month, but it wasn't it? I mean, the whole bank, mm. banking hall was, was, you know, was full of rainbows. It's over the top, isn't it? Uh, and, you know, I'm, you know, I support Pride Month. I go on Pride marches. Uh, I've been a gay politician of the year at one point. Uh, I've done all that. But I, I just, I, I think what indicates, I mean, banks should be banking, right? Yeah. Their, their job is to provide finance or not provide mm. finance uh, and not to make value judgments on their customers. Yes. Because once you start going down the road, I mean, it's all right. I mean, you know, everybody, John Sopel was trying to have a laugh at Nigel Farage's expense and mm. ended up having to apologise. But, yeah, I mean, people laughing at Nigel Farage, to me, is fine. You know, I mean... People well, it's a tell free jokes, country. Yes, absolutely. And, in fact, Nigel Farage um, himself was talking to Julie Hartley Brewer this morning. He's not calling for the head of, of uh, Coots to be fired. Well, that's he's very not, reasonable of him. Well, yeah, but he is a very reasonable guy. I know well, Nigel. You know, well, yeah, he is but, not an extremist. But, he is but, not a bigot. Well, he is not a racist. Like, he has Coots, some views that some people disagree with. Coots Bank have managed to create a situation... Mm. <clears throat> 
that have put Nigel Farage in the position of generously saying he doesn't think the head of the Coots Bank yeah. should resign. And that is just such a blunder. What I would do uh, is I would identify... Uh, the person who mm. took this ridiculous decision based on politics... Well, it was a committee, wasn't it? ...and say, would you like to stand for election uh, to become an MP mm. uh, instead of being a banker? Because clearly they've missed their vacation. Mm. Or, or maybe they want to go into a pulpit somewhere. Yes. Or maybe have a radio or show. Or perhaps join the civil service, where they can, <laughs> uh, to their heart's content, ask for people's pronouns every time they send an email. Can I, it's just a serious point, Mike. Mm. The, you know, this is obviously not just about Nigel Farage. I mean, there was this, this case recently of the, the, the very prominent blogger, Wings Over Scotland, yes. who has a vast following. He had the same problem, didn't and he? And he described in exact detail how one of his accounts was suspended uh, and he traced it back to an individual who hmm. was in a position to make that decision, right. you know, who seemed to be there to educate other banking employees. He was a transgender <clears throat> representative, well, I understand. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know the detail of that, but mm. what I do know that person was in a position to influence the decision, and their job seemed to be to educate banking employees on what the politically correct yes. thing to think about was. You know, I think you should educate bankers on how to be bankers, mm. and I think we should insist on them having banking qualifications yes. so as they make wise well, financial decisions. Well, notwithstanding your involvement with the Royal mm. Bank, you know, the fact that they couldn't seem to run a bank at all because they started carving up various different investment packages and selling it by the well, million. No, the worst thing so is people in America who were buying houses they couldn't afford tells you that they were a bit overstretched. Right, OK, the, well, the Royal Bank, I think sorry, the Royal Bank bought all their problems. Yeah. They, they bought their problems from AB and AMRO and, incidentally, they bought their problems from NatWest Capital Markets. Yeah. The Royal Bank, the original Royal Bank, had no capital exposure yeah. like that at all. Mm. They bought it all, which was a nonsense. But, you know, the, the big joke ten years ago, and more when the, the banking crisis was on, <clears throat> that uh, Fred the Shred, Fred Goodwin was head of the Royal Bank of Scotland, yeah. a guy called Andrew Hornby, who mm. I think had done his training in Tesco, uh, was head of the Bank of Scotland. And then, of course, there's Terry Wogan. And the joke was, who's the odd person out between Terry Wogan Fred, Fred Goodwin and Andy Hornby. Hmm. And the answer was Terry Wogan right. because he was the only one of the three with a banking qualification. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, breaking news for you on the subject of King Charles apologising to Nigel Farage. The sovereign grant used to fund the monarchy's official duties will be 12% of the Crown Estate's net <clears throat> profits next year, down from 25%, according to the Treasury. So he might be... Uh, Asking his friends at Coots for a bit of an overdraft. Well, I will. I mean, that, 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 that's obviously has just, I mean, the Coots are having a bad morning. They really are. <laughs> well, they're having a bad week, but as you say, they brought all this on themselves. But when on earth did this whole business of, you know, politically um, exposed persons become a thing? Because technically, oh. you could be one of them. Yeah, well, um, I'm, I'm actually one of these, because if you, if you lead a political party, even a, a party as newborn as, as Alipa, mm. you, you become by automatically a, a, a politically exposed person. And that, unfortunately, you know, the trouble is that instead of having human decision making, yeah. uh, uh, you know, deciding things, there's algorithms which, you know, flag up people mm. as, and Farage will be politically exposed as well because of his political activities. And therefore, you get things like even if a, no, it hasn't happened to me, I should say, uh, but it, even if transferred a few hundred quid, mm. it gets flagged up as yeah, something yeah. potentially about money laundering yeah. or something. Now, but they do money laundering all the time. I mean, I was involved in. in well, wait, wait, you better rephrase that. Who does money laundering all the time? Well, I was involved in. Certainly money not Nigel Farage. No, He's never been involved does. in money. I just like to make that very clear. Well, what I was going to say to you was there was a moment when I nearly bought a house a few years ago, um, and there was some money being moved from one account to another account, and money laundering came up, and the people who were looking at whether or not to loan the money said you, you need to, uh, you know, absolutely account for every single penny yeah. of where this money came from. Now, Ridiculous. Well, I, see, I don't mind the legislation. What I think happens, and why you get the most uh, egregious cases, is, is where the sort of algorithms flags it up and counts are automatically suspended. Right. Then you have to go through all sorts of rigmarole to get them unsuspended. Yeah. And, and I know people have been in that position, and it was just because they'd been flagged up as politically uh, yes. exposed. So, but, is, but is this an EU thing, that, that, that you become a politically exposed person? I, is, I, it, is it their legislation? Well, I, I, to tell you the absolute truth, Mike, you finally stumped me on a question. Ah, I, 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 I knew I would eventually. Except I'm naturally suspicious every time you start to blame the EU for all the... I'm I do not actually, blaming them. I do actually think that the... Uh, the legislation, the muted, the proposed legislation uh, of uh, saying, you know, putting an obligation on banks to this not, is what the government not to may make do. 
political mm. value, moral judgments on anybody, despite their views. Mm. You know, as long as they've got legal views, right. uh, then the bank should not be interested in what these views are, in my opinion. Right. Well, even if they've got illegal views, that shouldn't prevent them from having a bank account, should it? I don't even know what an illegal view is. Well, what is an illegal view? Well, I mean, the, the, there's a difference between somebody having a, a view that you don't approve of. Yes. Uh, like Nigel Farage, he has a range of views I don't approve right. of. But not everybody doesn't approve of them. But, but I don't approve of banks or supermarkets or tinker tailor candlestick makers right. or boarding houses. Yeah. I mean, for example, I, I rather liked the case, I think it was in Northern Ireland, uh, where a, a, a gay couple uh, were refused mm. into a, a, a boarding house yes. because uh, the, the guy didn't like homosexuals. Yeah. And now, that was, was Scotland, cooking. I think. Wasn't, wasn't Northern Ireland no, was no, a cake, I think, wasn't it? Was, it was a cake. Oh, you quite right. Yeah. You're, you're obviously, your encyclopedic knowledge is greater. Yes. Anyway, the, 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 the homosexual couple won uh, their case, yeah. and rightly so. Uh, it's not the job of people providing a service to make any value judgments on somebody's lifestyle, their political views, or anything else. The only thing a bank should judge is whether it's a financially proper a uh, proposition. But there are libertarians and some on the left who say, actually, you free marketeers have got it all wrong. Because surely if the free market uh, <coughs> allows somebody to start a business, they can give that business or withhold that business to anybody they wish, can't they? Yeah, but... I mean, I'm not making a case for Coots here. I'm no, just saying that's the opposite case. Well, because the other thing you could argue about Coots is the, the so-called million-pound rule. Yeah. I'm not sure this million-pound rule actually exists. It doesn't. No. I, I mean, because I mean, in your previous example, the, the Queen Planet must have been a million-pound overdraft. Right, exactly right. And also but, there are several what you might call aristos who are probably down at heel who've got massive estates somewhere in Gloucestershire who might not have lots of cash, but have got an account at well, Coots. Well, that's called collateral. It is. Uh, it's called old money, but there's not much <laughs> of it. That's why they open it up to the public at the weekends.